How can we understand Taliesin's myth? Well, we can try and interpret the different themes and symbols that appear in Taliesin's story. But to do that well, to do it properly, we need to understand the broader tradition the myth comes from. We need to look at a broad range of texts in the Welsh tradition that explore similar themes and symbols. But this isn't as simple as it sounds. One of the most important sources for the Taliesin myth is the legendary poems that we find in the book of Taliesin. Poems probably composed by 12th century bards working in the voice of the legendary Taliesin. But when we look at these legendary poems, we find they're actually totally unique. On the surface of it, there's nothing from the same period that looks anything like these legendary poems. There are later sources, poems and stories that suggest how the Taliesin myth evolved in the following centuries, but nothing in the 12th century itself that looks anything like the legendary poems. Now, if we go a little deeper, we see that there is actually one Welsh text that can help us. Now, on the surface of it, this Welsh text looks very different to the legendary poems. But when we peer below the surface, we find there are some important connections that help us understand what could be going on in the Taliesin myth. Now, I've spent most of my adult life studying and researching two medieval Welsh texts in particular, the Book of Taliesin and the Four Branches of the Mabinogi. And I believe we can only really understand either of them by studying them together. I believe they both give us a window onto the same tradition of Welsh mythology. Let me show you what I mean. So what are these deeper connections between the legendary poems and the four branches of the Mabinogi? Well, we can see some pretty obvious ones to begin with. For example, Taliesin is mentioned in the second branch of the Mabinogi. He is one of the seven companions to return from Ireland with Bendigaitran's severed head. Now, in the poem Prethia Anovn, the spoils of Anovn that we find in the book of Taliesin, we see that Taliesin is also one of the seven companions to return from the other world after a great battle. And just like the second branch of the Mabinogi, there is the King of Britain and a great cauldron involved in this great battle somehow. It's not exactly the same story, but it's similar enough for us to see that they have evolved out of the same underlying mythology. Of course, we can go beyond this and see that in the fourth branch of the Mabinogi, Gwydion uses his enchantment, his magical power, to take special animals, to steal the magical pigs that Anovn has given to the kingdom of David. Then in the poem The Battle of the Trees from the Book of Taliesin, we see that Gwydion uses his enchantment to conjure these great magical trees. He enchants the trees and the shrubs of the forest to fight on the side of the Welsh against some unknown but mysterious foe in a battle once again over a special animal, this time the special cow or the buck named Anhin. That's another mysterious story that we don't have time to look at here, but once again we find that there is a deep structural similarity between a story in the Mabinogi and one of the poems from the Book of Taliesin. And then again in the fourth branch, we see that it's the great enchanter Gwydion once again, alongside Math, the king of Gwynedd, who creates Blodeyedd out of the flowers of the field, out of the green vegetative life of the land. And in almost identical circumstances, once again in the poem of the Battle of the Trees, Gwydion and Math this time create Taliesin out of green life. It's as if Taliesin and Blodeyedd have a similar origin story. But even though we can see that there are similar motifs or underlying structures that are common to both the Mabinogi and some of the legendary poems from the Book of Taliesin, these structures only really have to do with Taliesin. 
But there is, of course, another really important character in Taliesin's myth, Kerry Dwen, who doesn't get mentioned at all in the four branches of the Mabinogi. So where is Kerry Dwen in the four branches? She's certainly mentioned in the legendary poems. She even has her own poem where she speaks in her own voice. For example, she describes Gwydion's story. Kelvadav gur a giglei, Gwydion apdorn de gavnerthei, a hitoi shrai govlotei, a the digmoch o the hei. Which translates as, the most skillful one I ever heard of, that is, Keritwen never heard of, was Gwydion, son of Dawn, consistently producing splendid things. Of course, he was renowned as a great enchanter, who conjured up a woman from flowers, who stole pigs from the south. Now, not only does Keritwen mention Gwydion, but she also appears to locate herself at the court of Dawn. Rim gelwyr cyfrwys yn llystôn, mi ac eironwy ac eiron. I'm called a knowledgeable one in Dawn's court, I and eironwy and eiron. So here we have Keritwen claiming that she is essentially one of the court of Dawn, potentially one of Gwydion's siblings, just like eironwy and eiron. Now, if this is the case, then there was clearly a tradition where Keridwen was part of the mythology and the story of this very family who make up pretty much all of the characters of the fourth branch of the Mabinogi. But Keridwen isn't mentioned there. She is strangely absent. Now, there are other ways we can connect Keridwen with the four branches of the Mabinogi. For example, when we compare the female characters from the branches with Keridwen, we see that there are many similarities. There are many structural connections between all of these characters. Now, I believe that these similarities reveal an older archetype, a female archetype that sits behind Keridwen and some of the female characters in the four branches. Now, this female archetype has many different aspects. She has a, an animal aspect. She has a mother aspect. She's also connected with the theme of death and rebirth and transformation. I believe that this older female archetype is one character in an older mythology that sits behind both the tale of Taliesin and the four branches of the Mabinogi. Now, if you'd like to find out more about what we could call Kerry Dwen's Mabinogi, you're more than welcome to sit the Mabinogi course, which you can find on the CelticSource.online website. Diolch Enjoy!